Miss Lisa Bokeen, and we are two brown chicks changing the face of therapy on both, both sides, sides of, of the couch. couch. Yes. Welcome. I feel like we need like applause. Uh, like yeah. you know, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm gonna start adding applause. We need that. that. We need that. I'm saying that. But I don't want people to listen to podcasts and be like, "What happened to the applause?" It's probably not happening, guys. I'm gonna bring like some some sort of audio next time. No, no, no. Yeah, you just gotta have clips on your phone. You gotta be ready. Uh-huh. Yes, I'm, I'm gonna stay ready. <laughs> All right, today we're here with Dr. Latoya Gilmore, and we're going to chat about emotional intelligence and all that fun stuff, yes. um, relationships, which is our favorite topic, yes. <laughs> so this is going to be an exciting discussion. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything that we need to announce before we get started? Before we get started, I don't think there's anything that we have to announce. Last week, we did the Glitter in, Go- Glitter in Gold. That was so wonderful. It was such a good event. Oh, my goodness. Um, Valencia puts on the best event. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was amazing. <laughs> and it was so such a good conversation. And it's funny because we went as Melanin and Mental Health, and we basically talked about relationships because yes. <laughs> our private practice stuff. Yeah. But it was it was amazing. So if you ever get a chance to check out Fro Real Dope, Fro Real Dope. Mm-hmm. Glitter in Gold. Make sure you go because yes. it had good food, uh, good vendors. The vendors the were cupcakes. amazing. The cupcakes were delicious. I had cupcakes. two. They were so yes, good. Yes, <laughs> and just the vibe of yeah. it. Yeah, just the vibe. I mean, uh, Valencia is a huge mental health advocate. Mm-hmm. She, we had to get her on the show also because right. she's um, very honest about her uh, story and you know relationships. I think are really the core of mental health. Right. Right. So it was a great event. Right, right, right. So we're excited to have Dr. Gilmore here today. And so can you tell us a little bit about your practice? And you just shared with me that you just went full time. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. That's a big deal. I yeah. took the leap. I jumped. Yes. That's a big deal. So tell us about what your practice is about and how you're helping minority communities. All right. So Dr. Latoya Gilmore. Ellis Gilmore Counseling Services. Yes, on Monday, actually, I took the leap. Just, wow. Just <laughs> I was like, how long? She was like, two days. Yes. I said, this is day yes. two. Yes. <laughs> this is day two of That's full-time exciting. private practice. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, Ellis Gilmore Counseling ther- Services um, specializes in relationships, mm-hmm. you know, helping people preserve what they have, what's vital to them, what is of importance to them helping them focus and concentrate on the things that they desire to focus and concentrate on and seek the change that they desire to have in their lives. That's awesome. So why do you think that's important for minority communities? It's very important to be able to look introspectively and see, you know, what aspects of my life, what aspects of possibly, you know, my family line that Mm -hmm. I do not want to pass Mm -hmm. on to my kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we see these things, we notice these things. We see things in grandmother and grandfather and maybe our parents and siblings and cousins and and we may have these questions of, okay, I want to do life differently, right. but how do you start that process? Right. Mm-hmm. right. Awareness is just the first step of change, mm-hmm. but after that, there needs to be some application. But if I don't know where to start, then right. I just know I don't want to feel this. Right. I don't want to do this. Right. I just mm-hmm. don't know. Feeling that, that um, I think so many people get to that point where they feel stuck. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it's like, this is what I've always seen. Mm-hmm. And so if I don't, I'm, I'm really big on um, examples and have been able to see something different. Mm-hmm. And that goes into mental health as well as like professional and things like that. And when you don't see something different, sometimes you can't even conceptualize what that would even look right. like. Right. Exactly. So. exactly. so I like to think that I'm in the business of helping individuals get unstuck. Love it. Awesome. Love awesome, it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you talk a lot about emotional intelligence. So can you explain what that is for people that may not have a good understanding of it? Yeah, emotional intelligence is just the ability to have an awareness of yourself, what's going on with me, how I interact with my world, individuals within my world, how mm-hmm. do I adapt to change, how do I manage the stressors mm-hmm. that happen, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And so those are the four premises of emotional intelligence. And um I follow that from the Bar On model. Ruben Bar On is a professor at University of Texas, and Mm -hmm. he established this model in 2006 that kind of has those four compartments Mm -hmm. of emotional intelligence where you're really investigating, okay, am I aware of what's going on with 
me. So the first one is, am I aware of what's going on with me? So that's the intrapersonal scale. Intrapersonal, right. okay. And then the second one was? It's interpersonal. So that's your interactions with other people, those okay. that are around you. Are you able to show empathy? Do you even know what empathy is? Right, mm -hmm. right. So, so that's one component, and then you have the adaptability component. Adaptability, right? okay. Because if there isn't anything constant, we know that change is going to happen. Right, for sure. Right? right. And so, how do you adjust? Are you flexible, or are you that rigid individual, mm. right, that isn't able to adapt to right. to the changes that occur in your life? And then the fourth premise of that is that stress management. Stress mm -hmm. management. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's 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 so good because right away you can kind of see how that could easily um, show up in relationships, mm. right? <laughs> right. Yes. You mentioned something like that yesterday, I think, on, on your Instagram about... Oh, the, the what you need, what you ex how you expect somebody to respond right. is what you need, and then how they actually respond is based on what they need. Right. I saw that post. Yeah, we mm -hmm. go into it assuming that... Okay, I'm going to talk to you about this, and I need you to answer it just like this. Right. So that I can get whatever I need, whereas right. you're not even thinking about the fact that they need something right. completely right. different. Right. And yeah. that's how they're going to reply to and you. And they're going right. to reply to right. me based right. on what they yes. need. Yeah. And that would be part of the emotional intelligence is understanding, having empathy, or maybe just understanding their ability to show up in a certain way. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right. But it starts with self. Everything mm -hmm. starts with me. Everything. Right. <laughs> yes. Begins. Yes. All of it. <laughs> yes. And it, it always comes back to you. Yes. Even when we're talking about relationship stuff, it's always going to be okay. Now, what did you do, and how do you handle mm -hmm. it? How do you deal with this change? Mm -hmm. And I, that's it's so so simple. Like self, others, change, stress. Right. <laughs> it's simple but not easy. Right. But not it's easy. simple is not always yeah. easy. And, and especially if you've observed other things for you know. A, a, an mm -hmm. extended period of your life, you work with what you've seen mm -hmm. that you feel comfortable with, but really isn't comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's there's there's comfort in discomfort that you know. Yes, <laughs> exactly. We, we exactly. we're more we're more afraid of that discomfort which we don't know. Right, right. As right? So I'll keep doing the same thing, even mm -hmm. though it isn't getting me, you know, where I desire to be. It's not producing the results that I want, but I'm familiar with. Right, it. right. And it, it's interesting because I feel like I bring that up a lot when I'm working with anybody, individuals, couples, friends. <laughs> like it's just when I'm yeah. talking to people mm -hmm. and they'll tell me like about this cycle that keeps happening. And I, I'm always saying like, so there's something that attracts you to that. Or there's something that feels right, right about that. Right. right. And they're like, no, I don't like it. Then I'm right. like, but you, you know what's going to happen next. Right. right. You and are there aware is. Familiar. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is some, some, I don't know if it's comfort. It's comfort. That's we not don't want to call life. it comfort. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Um, but it's it's we feel like there's some sort of control mm -hmm. even in that because it's like I already know what you're going to disappoint me, right? Right. And I already know how to manage that disappointment. Mm -hmm. I'll curse. I'll do right. whatever it is. Right. Right. But I know that I don't know what it's going to be like for me to manage me setting boundaries <laughs> or me getting out of the relationship exactly. right. what mm -hmm. does that look like what does that right. look yes. like that's right. so foreign yes yes mm -hmm. okay so what are some ways that you can begin to improve your own emotional intelligence so as i mentioned before it starts with self so right. have an honest conversation mm. with you mm -hmm. Ooh. We know. Ooh. We know. <laughs> we know how I honest. Know, right? Doc. What What are some things that I do well? What are some things that I wish I could improve? Mm -hmm. That's where you start. It starts with looking at the person mm -hmm. in the mirror right, right. and doing that self assessment. And there are some ways that I want to grow. And so, okay, I see how this person handles, you know, having. 50 different things to do when, you know, they're not cussing people out. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they're right. managing, they're mm -hmm. prioritizing. Maybe I need to connect with that person and see what it is that they're doing, what works for them. I see, you know, how someone else is able to have, you know, these great relationships and have this communication that I feel that I'm lacking. Like, right. how can I glean from that? But it first starts with the conversation mm. um, with yourself first. And then another thing that you can do is elicit honest input from those that also know mm -hmm. you because the people yeah. that hang around you, your family members, you know, those that you trust and you value their opinion, mm -hmm. you're like, yeah, you fly off the handle sometimes. Right. Or it's hard for you to listen. Mm -hmm. Like you just want to be heard, but you don't have the capacity mm -hmm. or you don't make room to hear other people. Yeah. Right. Um, 
And so starts with self and then eliciting, you know, input from others. But of course, therapy. Right. Yeah. When you said that mirror, that's the first thing of I thought. Course, that's therapy. 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 Because. Place, go ahead. No, this place in space is able to give you some insights mm -hmm. about yourself, right. about your situations, about your family, about you know, things that have become legacy that you do not want to continue, want to repeat, right, you know? Yeah, right. And yet this space brings about such a deep level of awareness if you're open right. to mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Such an advocate for mental health within our community. You yeah. Know? yeah. Alone here. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. What were you going to? Oh, I was just going to say, if therapy being... I would think the first, I don't know if the first, yeah, the first, because sometimes you don't want to open that door to family member telling, well, let me tell you what's wrong with you, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think it also really depends on the person that you ask for right. that feedback you need from, to be wise. right, yeah. like yeah. to really be able to discern mm -hmm. who is is going and and I think it's such a tough thing for people to do, right, to really have that honest conversation and. I do think it's important to have a sounding board mm -hmm. because sometimes we don't see our own stuff. Right. Right. Like I don't see what I'm doing wrong. Right. <laughs> you know, and like sometimes I'm, you don't see what you're doing right. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yes. And yes. so having that sounding board who can give you honest feedback with compassion, mm -hmm. I think is really big. Yeah. You know, because sometimes it's like <clears throat> We can't see it, like even within. We think we're doing, and a lot of times we are. We're doing the best we can. That we right. can. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that mm -hmm. we can. Mm -hmm. And that, I, I'm glad you brought up the therapy piece because when you were talking about even going to others and getting that feedback, I was thinking like, what if you have other emotionally unintelligent people around exactly. you? Exactly. Right? That's what, right. what if your surroundings <laughs> are filled with people that are like, it's nothing wrong going off. It's mm -hmm. nothing wrong crush people out. It's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with the right. way that you react to things. Yes. Um, but you know that you don't feel comfortable right. in that. Mm -hmm. So then trying to seek something else to kind of help you figure out what that next step is to, to, to grow. Mm -hmm. And it might have to be therapy if you yeah. don't have anybody in your surroundings that can honestly um, help you in that. Right. Yeah. yeah. If in emotional intelligent mentors are not within your particular yeah. Yeah. Right. Like that. right. Emotionally yeah. intelligent right. mentors. Like if you don't key. have any, then definitely, you know, you would skip that particular. Right. <laughs> together but again it starts with that insight that first that self-awareness mm -hmm. and, and we know we know there might be some things that every time we do it or every time the situation occurs it's like oh I wish I would have handled that mm -hmm. different you right. have that conversation with yourself but you really don't again, yeah. know what different looks like like how do I do something different? Right. Like, this is all I've been doing right especially I, in the moment in the moment yes That's when your rational thinking is probably most you know, out the window right. because you're stressed in some mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And then depending on how we handle the stress, exactly. you know, that's going to be... And then you have that regret hangover, right? Like, oh, Just like <laughs> <laughs> And trusting your own gut with that because I'm, I'm going to keep going to this because I feel like I've seen this so much. But, like, if you go to somebody like, man, I did this this way and that, that wasn't good, they're like, it's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. It's nothing wrong. You know, you have to also trust, like, nope, I don't like it. You right. know, and as opposed to looking for validation in other people. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. That validation, and that's another thing that I love about therapy mm -hmm. is it's not about whether or not my mom, dad, grandmother, or grandfather believes in right. therapy. Right. Right. I'm not seeking your approval or your validation. Mm. This is this is attached to my mm -hmm. healing. My right? well mm -hmm. And so this is something that I am going to pursue because I desire to do something right. different. I desire to grow. I mm -hmm. desire to you know, reach and accomplish and excel in all of these various areas, whether they're emotionally, professionally, financially, right. so on and so forth. And I see this as, you know, a conduit to yeah. get me there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We talk about that a lot about, you know, as an adult, you'll get to a place in your life where maybe, you know, you're going to do life different. Mm -hmm. Or you're faced with the with the crossroads of doing life different. Right. And you may not always get support from right. the people you love. And part of it is just they can't see it because they've never done it differently. Right, right, right. right. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. That lack of knowledge, that lack of exposure, awareness, being able to even relate to mm -hmm. where you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that sense that we have, you know, where we're still 
you know, by nature, very tribal. We want to belong. We want to be part of something. And the idea that if I'm doing life different, you know, it can feel very isolated yes. also. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. yeah. Isolated and lonely at mm-hmm. times. Yes. And how do you how do you let go of the need to try to pull them along with you? Because mm-hmm. that's a big part too, right? Yeah. So once you become more aware and mm-hmm. once you're learning mm-hmm. things and you start to see these patterns within family or friends, mm-hmm. then now you want to like lecture them like, no, mm-hmm. this is the way mm-hmm. we're supposed to be. And, and, you know, there's a lot of resistance to that, of course. Right. So kind of letting go of that need to bring them along with on the journey with you. Like, what do you have any suggestions for that? As far as in bringing others along, you know, on this particular journey, sometimes, depending on the mm-hmm. situation, you just have to live right. yeah. and let your life teach. Right. Mm, live and let your life teach. I like that. Mm-hmm. And then from there, then you'll get the inquiries. You'll get the questions. So mm-hmm. how this, and I saw that, and, mm-hmm. That's true. or you may not, but again, it's a choice. It's up right. to you to accept if you're interested in it. I'll be happy to tell you, right. you mm-hmm. know, that this was, this was a very, you know, important part of my journey, my self-awareness, right. my growth was actually going to therapy myself. I'm not just a therapist. Right. Man. Look, right. remember that commercial that says, you know, not I'm, only am I a, um, a client, I'm the president. <laughs> I always want to say I'm the player president, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the hair club president. Right. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I'm also a client. Yeah, I'm yes. a client too. Therapists need therapy yes. too all day. Yes, yes. all day long. Mm-hmm. And, and to be able to be in a place where your reactions and your responses are different than the norm mm-hmm. of right. your particular tribe or culture right. or family. And yeah, you, you might stick out, but at the same time, that might be a light that draws mm-hmm. people closer mm-hmm. to you as well. Yeah. So. And 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 we do have to be prepared for that light may also upset others right. and that they didn't think that there was another way possible. Hmm. And so now they see you doing the things that when you do life like that, that's that it's not going to work. It's not going to work. That's not, you know, and then they see that that can cause a lot of angst in them. Right. Right. Because then it's like, oh, well. It may trigger in them why didn't why didn't they do life different right? Mm-hmm. But I think it's important to know that stuff is going to be about them right right because when you're trying to do things differently, there can be a lot of guilt, there can be a lot of confusion, and and you're starting something that you know you don't really have a template for right right, right. and so that resistance is not necessarily a sign that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. people are going to go through their stuff and it's right. going to trigger in them their stuff right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and it can have very little to do with you. Yeah, yeah. And to be able to separate, mm-hmm. separate what's yours and what's mine. Absolutely, yeah, right? because I'm over here unpacking. I'm not trying to oh, oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yours, like, yes. I'm unpacking what I've had. Right, you know? so right. I do not want to add to it. Right, at all. Right. Yeah. So when we're talking about relationships, and you are like, looking for a new partner. Um, or dating someone, how do you know if they have emotional intelligence yeah, I, or if that, you know? Now, I will say this. Emotional intelligence, from my understanding and what I've read and what I've learned, um, it is a lifelong journey. Mm-hmm. Lifelong journey. Mm-hmm. Because we're constantly growing and we're constantly changing. It's not something you can go online, you take this little assessment, and you <laughs> check all of these boxes, you're and you get your A+, plus yes. and you move on. You're certified. Yeah, you're certified. <laughs> EI expert. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, not that those don't exist. They do. Because they do. But, but as a client. But as a yeah. client and as an individual, mm-hmm. you know, understand that this this is a process. Right. But always be aware. Keep your eyes open just like you would, you know, with anything else. But you want to look at how they view themselves. Mm-hmm. Positive self-regard. Mm-hmm. You know, how do they talk about themselves? And I'm not talking about it in a narcissistic way. Right. 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 But you know, I'm a person, I'm flawed, but I like me. Mm-hmm. Do you mm-hmm. like, I like me, mm-hmm. you know? And so that self-awareness piece, how do they view themselves? How do they interact with other people? So mm-hmm. it's just observation. It's like looking, you know? Mm-hmm. How do they treat family members, close friends? Do they have close friends? If they right. don't, why not? What's going on? Right, right, <laughs> why, right. Why you don't have right, any right, friends? Right. We need to talk right. about, you mm-hmm. know, all these series of ruptured relationships. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's going on? Am I next? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, mm-hmm. what, how, how much time do I have? Right, mm-hmm. You know, right. so again, that intrapersonal, that interpersonal, and then 
looking at, you know, whenever they're stressed. So this takes time. It's not right. something that, oh, date one, you know, this mm-hmm. first day. Answer these questions. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll know because we all know when you first meet someone, who do you get? You get the representative. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Right. Unless this is someone that you've known forever mm-hmm. and you've never had any romantic feelings for initially and you were able to forge an authentic friendship, then that's different. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. then you're able to just be you and relax. But but if there's that, you know, that attraction mm-hmm. and that intimate component there, yeah. then we're like, my best, best face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. You know? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So just paying attention to how they view themselves, how they interact, treat others, listen closely, you know, to how they talk about other types mm-hmm. of relationships, whether it's friendships, family, or other romantic relationships. And again, that whole flexibility. Mm-hmm stress management part, you know, right. are they able to manage change? Because we all get stressed out. Mm-hmm. Do you, right. Again, fly off the handle when you encounter stress. Are you not able to make a decision without right. calling someone and asking, like, are you able to move through life in some aspects independently, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. On, on your own? So, right, right, yeah. right. That's awesome. So, again, self-awareness, mm-hmm. how you treat others, and then how you handle change and stress. Yeah. Those are, those are good tips. And I, I think I, I, I'm, I'm a big advocate of take time before you make major decisions in relationships. Right. Um, the getting into the relationship, not so much, but like, oh, we've been dating for two months and now we're engaged and now we're married. Yes, it works out for some people, but you yeah. need to see how these people handle mm-hmm. different seasons. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how they handle stress, yes. how they handle tragedy, how, you know, like right. how do they handle these things. Um, and who they are over a long period of time because mm-hmm. I can keep my representative for probably like six to eight weeks. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's all you need. And then yeah. slowly that other side is going to start coming out, you know, yeah. as I feel more comfortable with right, you. Right, because so, I'm letting my guard down. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you have to take time in relationships to really get to know the person on a deeper level than just what they're showing you in the beginning. Okay. Seeing how that's they great. handle stressful situations. Okay. I, think, I think it was Dr. Maya Angelou <laughs> that said, Seeing like a person how they handle, I'm totally butchering the quote, and I don't even know if it was Dr. Maya Angelou, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> yes, somebody that said, <laughs> that said you really get to know a person by the by seeing how they handle um, Christmas lights, tangled up Christmas okay. lights. <laughs> How they handle stress. So get maybe that can be your first date, yeah, right? Yeah. Take a take some Christmas lights. No seriously, yeah. disentangle this. When I'm <laughs> suggesting like ways to connect and ways to like um, to just in relations to know each other, I'm always like do do something that's a challenge. Go mm. escape room is a big thing now. Yeah. Go to the escape. Do something that's a challenge. Do yeah. something that is difficult that doesn't come easy and see how that person handles mm. it. How do they treat you when right. they get frustrated right. with you? You right. know? Yeah. Um it's important that you really see all sides and how you treat them when you yeah. get frustrated, right? What if, exactly. Am I like, oh wait, I didn't mean to curse you out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oops, did that, come did that? I thought I was holding myself together. My so yeah. So right. I think it's important to put yourself in those situations to, to see how everybody deals with those mm. those difficulties because they're gonna come. They you know will that come. with life in comes time, change and difficulty. And everything. Stress. Yes. Mm-hmm. It all. Everything. I like how you said. You know, in different seasons. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. It's only gonna be summertime mm. for so long. Well, right. Like, Winter know, blues it, are it, real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, Summer so in Houston is fun. That's what I was yeah. about to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you live in Houston, then it'll be extended. But right. Still, you get on, the you get season will eventually yeah. change. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, we're going to get some kind of cold weather. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually. It might be in 2019. Yeah. <laughs> January <laughs> headed towards February. Right. And then we're back to the warm again. <laughs> so how do they act in that one month? Right. Don't call it away. Yeah. Right. You don't know. Maybe you're going to relocate to Chicago or something yes. at some point. So, yes. yeah. Look. Be prepared. It's what we yes, say. Yes. <laughs> Preparation is key. Mm-hmm. It's key. So what is your favorite book resource um, to give clients or for therapists to read? For therapists to read, well, I know one that I just recently pulled off of my, my own shelf is Black Families in Therapy, Dr. Mm-hmm. Nancy Boyd Franklin. Mm-hmm. She's like my professional crush. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm a big fan of her. She actually trained under Salvador Wow. Yeah, she's a professor at Rutgers University. Awesome. Um, but yeah, that that would be a resource. It just mm. shows all of the different dynamics within our community. Not to generalize anything, but just yeah. to give you some insight. Mm-hmm. Template, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. give you some insights. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. So, what makes you a dope therapist? What makes me a dope mm-hmm. therapist? Yes. Why are you dope? Why am I dope? 
<laughs> well, LS Gilmore Counseling Services. So that LSG, when I was thinking about and formulating this particular name, I was like, okay, I want LSG to stand for something mm -hmm. other than just the initials of my name. <laughs> and so L is for love, S is for support, the G is for guidance. I believe that I'm a dope therapist because... I love people. Mm -hmm. I love to serve people. Otherwise, I wouldn't have dedicated so much of my life to right. being in school. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Number one. <laughs> Ongoing continuing education hours. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> and ever and ever. Ever and ever. Mine right. are up to be renewed mm -hmm. shortly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I love, I genuinely love people, working with people, serving people, helping them, you know, see their uniqueness. Mm -hmm. You know, their creativity, the things that only they can do because they are a individual mm, that right. is individually gifted mm -hmm. right. in their own special way. And mm -hmm. so it helps me to be able to support them and then guide them through the realm of therapy. And so again, I believe I'm a dope therapist because I encompass all of those things. And I feel like coming in and having a session with me is just like having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Awesome. Love it. That is awesome. All right, and so why is therapy dope? Therapy is dope because it is a place where you can come in and have a conversation. <laughs> That's right. About you, for right. you. About you, for you. You can change the legacy of mm. your family. Yes. Love that. Change the legacy. I mean, come on. You have, you have the potential to do something different. As long mm -hmm. as you are inhaling and exhaling, you're never too old for it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's never too late, mm -hmm. you know, and I I really appreciate, again, because not only, you know, am I on one side of the couch, I'm also a client. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so I appreciate from that personal perspective what it can do and how it can enhance you and how, you know, things that you experienced in childhood, you don't have to continue that on. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. those generational traumas mm -hmm. can stop and they can end with you. You can be healed from them. And you can go and you can grow in the way that is most beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I saw um, I saw a quote on Instagram, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I loved it because it said, it asked, what type of ancestor will you be? Wow. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea of changing the legacy of your family yes. may be the type of ancestor you'll be one day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that. Yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So tell everybody how they can find you. How can they get in contact with you? They can find me on Instagram at Dr. Gilmore Shares on my website, www.lovesupportguidance.com. Oh, awesome. Yes. That's smart. Yes. <laughs> Just a yes. new one's going to be lsgilmore.com. Yes. Okay. Yes. Lovesupportguidance.com. Love mm -hmm. I just want you guys to know that mm -hmm. that's who I am. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. you know, that's what I inhale and that's what I exhale. Love that. And so again, I, I think that it's a privilege and an honor every single client that I receive. I know that they were sent to me, mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. supposed to have. Yes, awesome. and, and you're so, in the Houston area. Yes, yes. Cypress, Cypress, Northwest Houston. Oh, you're in Cypress. Why did I think you were like out in Clear Lake? Yeah. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Barker Cypress. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. that is so good to know. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you for no joining us. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. This was wonderful. This was great. Thank you. Good conversation. Thank you. Thank you for everybody that is listening and watching. Um, check us out at melaninandmentalhealth.com. Make sure you join the directory if you haven't already. I have. She yes, is on the directory. One of our dope therapists. And she, you will find her at <laughs> Melanin and Mental Health. Um, and also follow us across social media at Melanin and Mental Health, Instagram, Facebook, and Melanin Health on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, posting all about why therapy is dope mm -hmm. and dope therapist and just the benefits of mental health um dope therapist gear shirts uh <laughs> mine is at home <laughs> <laughs> melodynamentalhealth.com go to sh the shop button um and i think that's it so yeah. we appreciate you guys for joining us yes, and we will talk to you next week Ciao. Bye -bye.